Uh, what's going on YouTube? It's been a hot minute, but we are here. This is a prototype of the folding drone that we have been working on. Had a couple of issues just getting the CNC going, but that has all been addressed, in which case we now have a working prototype cut out of carbon. Um, so we're going to do the actual flight testing now. I got the black box recorder set so that we can record to see if there's any kind of weird frame resonance. The goal is to see how this flies and uh, B, to see what the black box data shows because if there is some kind of weird frame resonance then we're going to have to obviously make some tweaks. So let's go for our first flight and uh, just so you guys know we are running 2208 motors. These are not brand new motors. Uh, I want you guys to keep that in mind. These are also not fresh props. I'm uh, very frugal and cheap at the shop and I keep a box of old shit just for these types of purposes. So we're also running Acon's new, I'll show another picture of it, but we're running Acon's new F7 AIO, which is a 60 amp ESC uh, flight controller combo. It is running BL Heli M, so we are running RPM filtering, but other than that, everything on here is completely default, default filter tuning, default PIDs. So uh, let's go see how this flies. Taking off in three, two, one. All right. Well, she's definitely smooth. I don't hear anything weird. All right, let's get some black box data. Let's get a couple of punches. Did you say there's somebody out here? Got you. Shout out to ambulance people, first responders. I hope I'm recording. Okay, good. <laughs> Just so I can show you guys. All right, well, my initial testing here is that this feels great. I don't, I don't hear anything weird. Um, I mean, I'm getting a little bit of uh, prop wash but this is also not tuned stock filters on 4.3 the only thing i did do was enable rpm filtering and flash bl heli m as i said earlier so all right let's go take this back now uh and see what the black box data says i'm expecting to see a little bit of stuff because of the prop wash but i'm more interested in seeing what's going on with this frame Oh, there you go. All right, so let's connect this. We've got 4.7 megabytes of data. We're gonna hit activate storage device. For those of you who have never done this before, we're gonna open up Black Box Explorer. Come on, Black Box Explorer. You can do it. There we go. Um, okay, so let's go over to noise plots. We'll open up the analyzer. There it is. Okay, so this right here, what you're seeing is the raw gyro data, data file. So it shows us that we've got something going on at around 212 Hertz. Uh, but the question is, is, once it goes through all the filtering, does it go away? The answer is yes, that's amazing. Let's check out the pitch. Okay, we've got a little bit of noise as well, kind of in the same area. Does it go away after filtering? Yes, it does. Okay, let's check out, yeah, might as well just check out all of the pitches. Um, the other thing I want to mention too, uh, is that this Acon flight controller is running the BMI270 gyro sensor. So it is going to be more sensitive than the MPU6000s that I always recommend. So considering all of that, I would say that this is good. That's yeah. Kind of the same area it's a little bit higher up in the range but let's see if it all disappears after filtering yes okay
The general thing that you want here is that can Betaflight's RPM filtering and filter tuning get rid of it? And the answer to that is yes. I could probably start turning off some filters as well to really start extracting performance out of it, but I would say that this is a good baseline. I would actually say that we are probably good to continue on in terms of seeing what else we need to do to make this work. So if you take a look at here, there's a couple of things that, um, that we need to change that I don't like. So here's the AIO. As you can see, there's barely any room. We can make this taller if we want to, but I, the, the bigger thing that I wanna do is I wanna figure out how to mount this flight controller so that it's actually just square so that you don't have the edges sticking out. I think that's gonna be very important. The other thing that we need to figure out is how to make this top plate a little bit more structural. Currently we have just the two standoffs up front, one single standoff out back, and at a, what is this, a two and a half mil? Mm -hmm. So at a two and a half mil, that is just, that's way too much play right there. If you put a battery on here and you were to do a hard landing, uh, that can be a problem. The other thing that is a problem is if you can see this is, oh, look at that. The, <laughs> the, the Vista isn't even all the way down. So considering that the Vista wasn't even firmly planted and we still got relatively clean after filtering uh, is a good thing. But that's what I want to point out. The Vista is not, it looks like it's an ideal place because it nestles in there very nicely. But the camera cable is, uh, is pretty much maxed out here. And then if we look at something like the HD Zero or some of the other flight control, or sorry, digital FPV VTXs, that's not going to fit here. I think we have a couple of things that we need to solve. The other thing that I want to do too is uh, also reach out to Get FPV, which by the way, if you don't know, it, is a sponsor of this build series, and start working with them to try out some of their Popo motors. Uh, we should also test to see some of the folding props. But yeah, so I think that's where we're at. I'm, I feel good about this uh, flight controller from, uh, from Acon. Um, I would prefer to find an AIO that's running an MP6000, but for those of you in the know, uh, finding flight controllers with MP6000s are pretty much getting very hard to find these days. In fact, I suspect that a lot of manufacturers are switching over to like B-rated batches of MP6000s because they don't make MP6000s anymore. Um, I don't know how long ago they stopped it, but what I, from what I understand, um, is that MP6000s, whatever's out there is out there, and people I think are kind of going to uh, B-rated batches because I've been getting a few from iFlight where the MP6000 was dead right out the bat. So, okay. Um, what I'm gonna do next is take this out. I'm gonna hand this over to you who designed this. And um, what else did you want to, now that you've seen this, Oh, you probably can't hear me, but what? now that you've seen this uh, built out in carbon and you've seen it fly and you've heard my feedback, what do you plan to do next? Well, none of the, uh, the location of the VTX and the camera and the top plate, none of that was, all of that was just to get this flying so that you can test for a vibration because the only critical part right now is does that center block and the arms and the way the arms pivot, is that uh, enough? To, to make sure there's no vibration or noise or resonance. And um, that's exactly what we answered today. So now, now that we answered that, I will completely eliminate all of where everything is mounted and start from scratch to, make, to find the best position for electronics, camera, VTX, whichever VTX that might be, uh, as well as battery mounting and battery strap. Because uh, something else that I was a little concerned about with this model is when we have the battery strap in there, it's like almost up against the flight controller. So next step is prototype revision two, uh, at least the flyable type. So I'm gonna go back and try to figure out exactly how these things are, how the parts are gonna mount in there. And then uh, hopefully the next time we see this, it will be a close to final uh, prototype. Also with the uh, wheel type of locking mechanism, no longer the push button, because like I said, Holding that down is just a little annoying when you're holding this, holding the drone, and folding arms. It's like you need three hands. Uh, I'd rather it just unscrew and it stays in the lock position while you, while you do everything. So, uh, thanks for watching. Keep stay tuned to this series. We will be having a lot faster momentum now, now because this is pretty much the primary thing. This is all I'm really working on. And uh, be sure to subscribe. We know a lot of you are out there watching. 
but not subscribing. Subscribing is important. Oh, oh, you should talk about it because you have the mic, but we also have these new motors. Oh yeah. These motors are sick. But this is a customer's. Yeah, this is a bind and fly for a customer, but uh, yeah, we got our new 2306. Uh, what are these, 1800 KV? Yep. And uh, it's in the, the Oh My God style, the, just like our uh, 2004s. Aerolites. The Aerolite style, and, uh, but it's sort of made for that Moon Goat size uh, five inch basher, so. Yep, if you get a bind and fly now, a Moon Goat, or we mix or anything, you get in those motors. They're on the store, there's even a deal as well. I think uh, Kelvin put a deal together where uh, you get, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but you get the discount after you buy four motors if you want a spare. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.